on tonight. Amen. Welcome to All On Tonight. We're grateful. Looks like we are live now on Facebook. And we say to you, Facebook, welcome. Welcome to Cornerstone Victory Christian Center. Amen. It is a place where the people of God is found in the center of the victory. Anybody feeling victorious tonight? Hallelujah. Anybody feel the victory of God? Hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else, but Lord, this has been a week. Amen. This has been a week. And I bless God that I'm still able to give God glory, still able to give him honor, and I'm still able to give him praise on tonight. What a mighty God we serve on tonight. Listen, you still have an opportunity, Zoom. Go ahead and walk in your anointing and your calling. Be that digital disciple, amen. Share the link, invite somebody to come on in and partake in this word that God has for us on tonight. We're excited, amen, that we're going to continue, amen, in our series of elevated righteousness to God be the glory. Amen. Bishop has really been teaching this. And boy, I tell you, we have really been walking in the word of God, fellowshipping on the word of God, gaining knowledge, insight, and wisdom. Amen. So I love these uh, nights like this Thursday nights. It's an opportunity. It's Bible study. So we slow down. We take the word, we teach the word so that we may receive the word, that word becomes life application that we may then apply to our lives, amen? Uh, James tells us that faith without works is dead and meant to be hearers of the word. Uh, it, we, we not only be hearers of God's word, but we got to be what? Doers of the word of God, hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm just so excited just to know what God has given, amen, what he has truly given uh, us as believers in his word. The word is full of benefits, it's full of promises, amen, and once we begin to gather wisdom and understanding of the word of God, the walk, this walk, then we can really walk with God and trust God and know that, you know what, though a storm may come, though a struggle may come, God is in the midst of it, amen, and he's able to deliver us through the storm. He's able to deliver us through the trials, amen, the tribulations, the struggle, whatever the situation is, we have to always stop, amen, and give God glory because truly he is worthy to be praised. We're so grateful, amen, uh, for all of uh, you on Zoom tonight, and we're grateful that you are ready, amen, to continue to walk in this series, amen, with us on tonight. So good to have Bishop White with us tonight. Uh, praise God. Amen. Uh, glory to God. Uh, so good to have uh, the McPhersons. Amen. Praise God for the McPhersons down there on the other side, the peak of the other side of uh, Dallas. Amen. Good to have you on tonight. Uh, we're grateful uh, for your time in the Zoom room, fellowshipping with us on tonight. Hallelujah. Well, listen, we have, uh, if you missed it on Sunday, you really missed an opportunity uh, to receive the word of God. So I'm just going to continue to flow in, once again, this series that we've been in that's um, elevated righteousness. Amen. We had our uh, in-house minister, Minister Margaret Harris, that um, released the word on Sunday. And I tell you, uh, she brought the word, she taught the word of God on Sunday. Amen. Uh, putting the old man off and put putting the new man on. Amen. Was a great word. She broke that thing down and really taught it in regards to his righteousness, God's righteousness and God's holiness. Amen. And so we're just grateful that uh, we can continue in this course that God has for us. So once again, on the Facebook, again, we say welcome, and we pray that you are ready, amen, to receive the word that God has for us on tonight. Hallelujah. I want to go, and I'm going to flow uh, as the bishop has given us a theme scripture there, and I'm going to just go to Romans uh, chapter 10 and verse 3. 
uh, that has been, Bishop has set that as our opening scripture, amen, uh, for this series that we're walking in the righteousness of God. Once again, that's Romans 10 and 3, and it reads, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. If anybody heard that word, I want you to just raise your hand, give a shout and just say, amen. Amen. I want to make sure that my audio is clear on tonight. Once again, that is our opening scriptures, Roman uh, 10 and 3. Amen. Thank you so much, Minister Mike. Amen. Minister Pat. Amen. To God be the glory. Uh, Romans 10 and 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. So we have to be careful with, amen, uh, wanting to create and establish our own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That is our opening theme, amen, as we have been walking in the season of elevated righteousness. I want to release, I'm going to re release a couple of things tonight uh, that's going to kind of flow around the theme of, uh, I want to give three uh, truths to know about the righteousness of God. And again, it's going to flow right into uh, a continual teaching. Uh, that uh, we are flowing in as we look at, once again, elevated righteousness. And uh, praise God for my husband on tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Uh, Deke is going to help me tonight in this. And so, Deke, if you go to 2 Corinthians, um, we want chapter 5, verse 21. Because uh, when we talk about the righteousness of God, it's very important that we understand um, you know, whether or not uh, if righteousness, at what point uh, are we righteous? Amen. And so again, I'm, my, my goal is to kind of set some truth and a pattern, a pattern of truth as it pertains to knowing about the righteousness of God. So if you read for us, the second Corinthians 521. In second Corinthians 521, and it reads, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. My God, did you hear the word of God? The word is so clear that God made him. Amen. Who's the him? Jesus. Jesus. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And, and truly, when we hear that and read that scripture, there's so important that we understand that one of the benefits of salvation is uh, once we are born again, believers, saved, water baptized, spirit filled, we have to really understand that we are then at that process now, we are endued with the righteousness of God. Amen. We're endued with the righteousness of God. And so that scripture in itself, you have to pray, take that scripture and begin to ask God to give you a revelation of it because you're talking about my goodness. You know, uh, uh, some people uh, think you have to work for the righteousness of God, but the scripture is so clear in terms of, again, the righteousness of God, that righteous status, that is a benefit, amen, of salvation. And so again, once we are born again, and we got to be born again of, again, the water and the spirit, amen, it's so important to understand and to make sure if you have not been baptized, amen, in the name of Jesus, my God, you need to go over to the chat room and just drop a, a, a line there, message and say, I want to know uh, more about uh, being baptized in the name of Jesus, because you deserve to know there are some benefits, amen, that is tied to, it's tied to, amen, uh, what God has for us as it pertains to salvation, but specifically, we're looking at the righteousness of God. So again, I want to flow in uh, Minister Harris teaching on Sunday. Uh, she broke it down and she says, uh, she defined righteousness. 
So what does righteousness of God mean? So I just kind of took as she was going into that direction. And so if we look at it according to Webster, uh, righteousness, a person who is righteous is described such as characterized by uprightness or morality, moral, morally right or justifiable. They're acting in an upright moral way. They're virtuous. So again, when you hear the word righteous there, a righteous person is a moral person. It's an upright person who follows or does what is right. You know, that's not like you have to be police. Somebody got to police you to make sure that, you know, you're doing the right thing. You do the right thing when you are a, a righteous, amen. You're going to do the right thing whether folks are looking at you, eyes on you, cameras watching you or whatever, because you understand that, you know what, you're going to characterize yourself as being, guess what, upright uphold moral conditions, moral rules, uh, to be justifiable, to walk in virtuous ways. Amen. So in, in essence, we have to say, um, uh, someone who is righteous, they live in the right way. That's just as simple as that. So when you're talking about uprighteous is someone that lives in the right way. So you know what living in the right way means? That means that guess what? If you you know that the Bible say man don't work, man don't eat. You need something, go to work, get a job. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't be praying. Well, you know, I'm just praying that, you know, God gonna bless me, you know, with mm -hmm. some food. I'm praying that God mm -hmm. gonna fill my pantry up. I'm praying that, you know, God's gonna uh, bless me with a house or somewhere to live or whatever. Uh, when you're talking about, again, uh, a moral person, a righteous person that you are going to do the right thing. Go to work, cut out the hook and crook stuff. Amen. Don't put your game up. It's time to put your games up. All you know, them games that we learned when we was before we were saved. Amen. So that's the time to put those things away because guess what? Now you're going to live a life that's according what? To the word of God. And God's word is so clear in regards to the definition of righteousness. Think about it. It's the state or condition. So that's what, when you're talking about righteousness, it's a state or condition of being declared upright, moral, just, or virtuous. So this righteousness is not something, um, it's not something in our own eyes. But when people can look at, people can look at you, boy, they'll look at you and they'll be able to say, man, you know what? There's something about that person right there. And there's something about that person. And you can declare, amen, they'll be able to declare that you are a person of character, amen. They don't have to worry about you, you know, going behind their back or trying to plot against them because they can see, amen, in your character that you are one that knows how to walk in an upright position. Amen. So even as we look at that scripture there in that uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5 and 21 there, again, read that for us one more time, D. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, so in that particular scripture there, that we might be made the righteousness in him, it means that God's approval. Amen. Mm -hmm. God has now approved or he has uh, considered us right in his eyes. Amen. So when you see that scripture there, and I keep really coming back to that particular scripture there, because when you talk about God made him who knew no sin for us so that in him, who's the him? In Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. So sometimes we can't see ourselves or walk in that righteous status because we're so busy comparing ourselves amongst ourselves, uh, amongst each other, instead of, again, knowing that the word of God says that, guess what? So I'm made righteous in Christ Jesus. So that's how I'm going to compare myself. I'm going to compare myself with the word of God. 
people of God. That's a point of deliverance. Amen. You know, they, they, there was an old secular song there to say, uh, um, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. And, 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 you know, when you think about things like that, that's a hard life to live. Oh, my God. To have an eye of envy, an eye of jealousy. My God, you can't be a righteous person living like that because then now you're constantly in comparison with what? People and with stuff that eventually becomes what now? Your faith. Your Christian walk now becomes performance-based instead of, again, just knowing that, hey, I'm made righteous in my who? I'm made righteous in Christ Jesus. So we got to think of it. I want you to think of it kind of in a fashion where, um, uh, uh, and this is going to be a deliverance point right here, uh, for those who struggle with the point of, again, comparing themselves and um, sometimes, you know, your mind and uh, sometimes what happens is the world and traditions, things will cause you to compare yourself or you don't think you're where you need to be at the point of your life. Oh, you know, I, I should be further. I should have these things. I should be able to accomplish this or whatever. You have to begin to see this Think about 2 Corinthians 5.21 in this fashion, that when God sees you, he approves you because why? Because you are a bearer of his righteousness, amen? So when you see yourself, that's how you got to say, look in the mirror and say, oh God, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you that I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. That means that God has approved me. That means that you are justified, amen, in his sight, amen. And so when we're justified in his sight, we understand, amen, that what the word of God says, and we can walk in that season without being all anxious that, you know, what we're missing a point, are we not here, are we not there? It's better for us to be in the will of God than to be in the will of man. Amen. And so truly we want to understand that this righteousness, amen, this righteousness is a benefit of our salvation. So I want you to just kind of let that sink in, let it sink in and you'll find, you'll begin to find reasons to just rejoice because God sees you and approves you. Amen. Come on, look at somebody and say, God approves me. God sees me and he, amen. He sees me and yes. he has approved me. So guess what? That's a point right there where you ought to shout. Amen. When something happens in your life, you got to just stop and say, you know what, God, I thank you. Thank you. I don't need affirmation from man because God has already affirmed me. God has already approved me. I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. I'm approved by God, baby. Get with the program. Hallelujah. So you ought to break you out of praise and a dance right there. Amen. Just knowing, amen, that you are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Amen. And listen, let me tell you, someone who was actually uh, raised Catholic, I was born and raised, amen, Catholic, led the rosary, amen. Stephanie, I know you on Facebook, she even went to Catholic school, amen. Uh, Sister Jeannie, who was taught, uh, tied up in Catholic as well, that bondage where, you know, they would keep us restricted, amen, couldn't go to God on our own, we had to go confess our sins to me, to a man, my God, and it was just thing that was taught to us that, you know what, you can't take on a righteousness status that, that and to claim that you would be righteous, oh my God, that would be like a curse, Oh my God, but thank God for deliverance. Hallelujah, that I am and I know who I am according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. I am the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And God has approved me, amen, to be the righteousness. And so we're just so grateful that boy, when you start walking in the revelation, amen, you start walking in that revelation that nobody can take that away from you, amen. It's one thing when you know it, you know what you know. Nobody can't take it away. So guess what? There ain't nobody can tell me that I'm not the righteousness of God. I know that I am the righteousness of God. Why do I know that? Because I am a born again believer and that's a benefit, amen, of my salvation. To God be the glory. Somebody ought to give him praise right there. I feel like shouting. My God. 
So listen, there are three things that I'm going to release tonight and I'm going to move out the way. Hallelujah. In regards to three things to know about the righteousness of God. Here's the first thing. And this is one that I think is so profound. Amen. It will expose, amen, religious teaching, amen, religious performance, amen. So the first thing is that we have to understand this, that it it's not earned. You can't earn your righteousness. There, you cannot earn it. It is given through an exchange process. Amen. And that exchange process is that once I become, amen, a born again believer, amen, check this out, how God loves us so. My God, I feel this thing about to bubble up in my spirit. Jesus, help me tonight. It becomes an exchange. What happens is I now come into Christ, confess my sin. I give Jesus my sin. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives me righteousness. My God, that's what the word tells me, that he who knew no sin became sin for me. My God, so see yourself and understand the first thing, hallelujah, about knowing about the righteousness of God is that you can't earn it. Amen. It's given through the exchange there. So it, the, the unique thing um, about God's righteousness and God. Um, seeing us as approved is that you, you have to first come to the understanding to know that there is not enough, there is nothing in the world that we could ever do, amen, there's not enough that we could ever do to earn God's approval outside of his plan, amen, for salvation. So you can't work for your righteousness. You cannot, the Bible tells us that our righteousness is what, like filthy rags, Amen. So understand that this is not, it's not only something that's unique, but it's also, I praise God for me, it's a relief. Why? Because it takes the burden off of uh, me. It takes the burden off of me that, you know, you got to do these five things. You got to turn this way. You got to bow down. You got to bring a dove in. You got to skin a cat. You got to bring a goat. You got to escape a pig. Praise God that guess what? God loved us so that he said, you know what? You can't earn this. You cannot earn this. Amen. And so he protected us, amen, from a performance-based lifestyle. When you really understand that, righteousness, I cannot earn this. This comes through God's plan of salvation. It comes through his plan of salvation. So again, we I really, really want to drive this thing home tonight. Did go to uh, Galatians 5, 19 for me, because it's so important that we uh, get that God's righteousness, again, is not earned. Look at somebody and say, it's not earned. It's not, not earned. earned. Come on, go on over there to the chat room and say, it's not mm -hmm. earned. God's righteousness is not earned. It's given through an exchange process. Amen. So there has to be a great exchange that takes place here. Amen. And here's how the exchange works. My God, I just get so excited about that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Tasha. That's right. It is not earned. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Mike. It is not. It is not earned. It's the great exchange. Amen. So here's how that exchange process works. Is that Christ takes on our sin. Amen. Because remember, in fact, he became our sin. And in exchange for our sin, we receive his righteousness. Somebody ought to shout right there, my God. So to declare the righteousness in God's sight, we must be willing, amen? We must be willing to put all, we got to put all the sin in, put it in. We got to put all the sin in, put it in. You can't come before God and, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to confess, you know, these things. I'm going to repent of these things here. Uh, and then, you know, but I'm going to hold back. Now, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. You got to put it all in, baby. You have to put it all in and allow God to do that great exchange. Amen. The willingness to put all your sin on Christ and to take up his righteousness. Amen. I'm going to put all of it in. I'm going to put it all in. Amen. I'm going to put it all in because guess what? I want that exchange that God has for me. 
Hallelujah. You have that Galatians 5, 19 Amen. and 21. And, 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 and listen what the word of God says so clear in regards to, amen, the work of the flesh, the sin. What does it say, D? And read. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variancy, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying murderers, drunkenness, revealings, and, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, hmm. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's just as clear right there. And so it Hallelujah. breaks it down for a, li yes. a list of those things. So we just mm -hmm. can't come to God and say, well, I'm just going to give God these sin right here. And I'm going to hold on to these here. You know, I'm going to still get a little drunk on the side over here. You know, I'm going to hold on to this over here because I'm going to commit a little, I'm going to creep, creep. You know, I'm going to creep, creep around the cone or whatever. You got to, when you come in, amen, if you're talking about receiving the righteousness of God, you got to understand it's not earned and it has to be through an exchange process. That means that I'm putting all of my sin on he who knew no sin that became sin that I might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And I know that that sometimes that that is a, it's a hard concept. It's hard to grasp in our natural mind, but guess what? The God that we serve, amen. He is not, he's a God of order and not sense. If you try to reason and reconcile things in your own human mind, amen. You going off trying to establish your own righteousness. Then guess what? You going to miss, amen. God's righteousness and what God has for us. So if we would just simply allow God, just allow God to take on, amen, God, take, take, take on our sins, let the exchange happen that I might receive your righteousness. I promise you, people of God, it's a point where, my God, we can begin to walk with God and we'll begin to experience the victory of God like never before. To God be the glory. That's why we have so many believers that are walking a defeated walk because we don't understand. It's not about performance. You can't perform enough. Amen. It is, amen, the righteousness of God is a benefit of our salvation. So you can't do, you can't go and say, you know, five hell mirrors and 15 glory be to the father and uh, three act of contrition and that will make you righteous. The devil is a lie. I thank God for my deliverance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God, when I understood what true righteousness in Christ Jesus meant. Hallelujah. So that's the first, amen, truth that, amen, that I wanted to share with you tonight in regards to the righteousness of God is that it's not earned. It's given in, in through exchange. And then the next one is it's not bought. Hallelujah. So you can't buy your righteousness. It is paid for. So I want you to understand this here in terms of, again, um, as we look at, again, another uh, one of the greatest aspects of God's righteousness is that it doesn't cost you anything, amen, but it costs Jesus everything. It cost him everything. Oh, he, he, my God, he carried that cross. Amen. He carried that cross. And on that cross where the nails were driven in, my God, they nailed them through his hand, through his feet. They pierced him in the side. He hung, bled, and died. So it cost him everything for our righteousness. So we got to understand this, people of God. It's not something that we can buy, nor is it something, amen, that we pay for. For. But thanks be to God that Jesus paid it all. Somebody say he paid it all. He, he paid, paid it all. all. Hallelujah all. to God be the glory. Hallelujah. So the good news, because God, hallelujah, God doesn't ask us. God doesn't require uh, uh, anything from us. God don't require something from us that we could never afford. Hear what I'm saying here? Yes, Sister Sandra, he paid it all 
to God be the glory. And I'm so grateful that, you know what, when you get a full revelation of this here, that God will never require, if God requires something of you, then you have to already know and understand that God has already given provision for that which he's requiring of you. Whatever it is that God, if he's requiring that we walk holy, live holy, he's given us everything that we would need so that we would live that life of holiness. Hallelujah. So it's not hard. Go to Romans 5 and 9 for me. So truly understand this here. And I bless God every time I get a revelation to truly understand that you know what? My righteousness, it has already been paid. It's been paid in full. Shout paid in full. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Romans 5 and 9 reads what? Romans 5 and 9. It reads much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Hold on, D. Let me, I'm going I'm to uh, mm -hmm. back it up. Go actually, go back to uh, uh, five, that was Romans five. Jump up to verse one. That's why I should have just, 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 just jump to verse one for me. Okay, Romans one, five and one. Uh -huh. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So some of you don't have peace. You got to understand this, your peace, you constantly praying for peace, but the word of God has already told us that we've been made right in God's sight by faith and we have peace. So mm -hmm. if you're made right in God's sight, what you worried about? You're not walking in your benefits. You have peace. Go ahead, D. Uh -huh. By whom also we have access by faith and to the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh work patience, and patience, experience, and experience hope. This is, what, this is what Paul talking about. He's talking about, you know, what you're talking about? He said, you can, you know what? You can just glory. You can just, guess what? Rejoice in these things. You can rejoice in these things. You can have peace. So guess what? When your trial come, when your test come, when your tribulation come, then you know what? Your peace should not be disturbed. Why? Because guess what? It is already written in the word of God. You are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So these things, you just have to go through the process, baby. Just go through the process. Keep reading these. And patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. My God. Which is given unto us. Mm. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. My God. For, for scarcely for a righteous man Will one die? Yet, pre-adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Mm -hmm. But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Hallelujah. So do we understand what the word of God is saying here to us tonight, that we have been made righteous by his blood. Amen. We've been made righteous. Amen. By the word of God, you got to understand, you need to stand in front of the mirror and begin to speak that thing into your spirit. And you need to say, I declare in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am righteous and justified because of the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. When you begin to get back in some of them old songs, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's a fountain. Hallelujah. Filled with the blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and the sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose their guilty stain. Hallelujah. That's them old songs. Amen. That reminds us. Amen. Oh, God, we just thank you that we understand. We bless God, amen, that he paid it all for us. 
He paid it all for us. So we really get to the place where we understand, first of all, bottom line, you and I, we're guilty as sin. Amen. We're guilty as sin. Amen. Yet there was a savior, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, who came down from heaven and shed his blood so that, guess what? It would wash away, amen, all of our guilt, all of our sinful stain. We would be washed, amen. Sometimes you got to just get into a position and a situation and say, Lord, I thank you that I am a blood-bought child. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I am washed. And then when you understand that, then you'll be able to receive Jesus Christ, amen, as your Lord and Savior, amen, and the benefits, and you understand, amen, who you are. You are, amen, you are the righteousness, amen, in God's sight. And so truly we understand that, you know what, there is nothing, there is nothing, hallelujah, praise be to God, that we understand we came by his righteousness, amen, that it is already paid for and it was paid for by the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. So then now what we have to do in that whole process there is then we just really begin to walk, amen, we begin to walk, we begin to walk our faith out, walk your faith out. We got to walk that thing out. Amen. And I even remember, I'm reminded of even uh, uh, Noah. You remember that that whole process there where uh, um, people were just living. They were living just raunchy. Amen. They were living raunchy life. My God. They was just ratchet folks back there. Amen. Just ratchet, pure ratchet people. And God just came in. Amen. He came in and he said, he told Noah, he said, you know what? I'm about to wipe it out. Noah, here, why won't you get your family? Get uh uh get get the animals here. Get two one two of each kind here. Get them on in there. Build an ark. Do all this here. And God called Noah. He said Noah was a righteous man. He was a righteous man, and he walked with God. That becomes the part, people of God, what we have to do as righteous people. We have to learn to walk with God. What does that mean? Walk with God. Walk with God means that we fellowship with God, amen? We commune with God, we pray, amen? We fast, we have times of devotion. We do what the word of God commands us to do. That's what walking with God means, hallelujah. And then the third, amen, the third, amen, the third point here in regards to uh, three things, again, uh, that I wanted to share tonight was uh, to know about the righteousness of God. The first one was that it's not earned, it's, it's given through an exchange. The second one, it's not bought, it's paid for. And the third and final one is that it's not temporary. Amen. You have to understand it. It's not temporary. Amen. It's eternal. Mm -hmm. It yes. is eternal. So really understand it. Go deep to Romans 3 for me, 3 verse 21. And, and sometimes we have to uh, really admit that sometimes uh, believers struggle. Amen. Believers as believers, Christians struggle with sin. We struggle with repentance. We struggle with forgiveness amen, and God's righteousness. We struggle with those things, but there's one thing that um, we must understand. Understand that God's made a declaration of righteousness over you. I want you to understand that tonight, amen. You have to get to the place to understand that God made a declaration over you, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And that declaration of righteousness that was made over us is not temporary, hallelujah. So don't let the enemy box you in that, you know what, when you didn't fail in sin, you are struggled and overtaken you. You have to get to that point. Don't live in guilt. Don't live in condemnation. Why? Because the word of God is so clear for there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So if you are in Christ, there is no condemnation. We truly have to understand that. I love that how Minister Harry 
Harris said that Sunday, you got to learn to talk to the devil. You got to, when he start telling you, well, you know what you did, uh, honey, now you finna go up in there. You gonna try to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You gonna be trying to cut a rug and dance and shout. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just what you did last night. Yeah, you're right. I did it. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. For the power of repentance. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So you have to learn how to not let that enemy, amen, cause you to become isolated, cause you to become crippled where you don't want to fellowship anymore. When he blamed, yeah, you blame, yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. Agree with him quickly and then come on now with the word of God and the plan of God because God has a plan for us. It's just like, you know what? I, I remember it um, being in kind of like, a, and, and Stephanie was uh, actually a, um, uh, uh, law student. She was going to school a uh, different direction or something there. Uh, but think about it from a legal, from the court system standpoint. Uh, think about when there's a case, when a case is dismissed. And you know, some of y'all, some of y'all on here, y'all done been to court and y'all done had uh, <laughs> tickets and this and that. And you think about when that court case is dismissed. Amen. Sometimes it's dismissed under with the word prejudice amen so they say we dismiss this court case in prejudice so what that means is that uh the case is dismissed forever <laughs> hallelujah is dismissed forever so that means that that issue is over and it's done with it's over it's done with once and for all it's it shall not for me, for me. It's over. It's done. And so that becomes now when God declares you righteous, he is in effect, what he's doing is he's dismissing the original sin with prejudice. Come on with me now. It's over with. God say it's over with. I dismiss that sin. You are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And you now have the benefit, hallelujah, that comes along with the plan of salvation. So it's not temporary, people of God. It is eternal. Understand this. God has dismissed that thing. Nobody's keeping you in bondage but your mind, yourself, and your flesh and the devil. But you got to rise up and know who you are so you can begin to dispel, amen, the lies that the enemy is attempting to bring your way. Somebody ought to shout right there. My God. Come on, Deke, read for me. Read for me Romans 3, 21, because I don't want to teach nothing apart from what the word of God said. I'm backing up everything with what God says. Why? Because I am so passionate, like the bishop said, about making sure that the people of God understand that you are righteous. Amen. Your righteousness is in Christ Jesus. When you became a born again believer, hallelujah, you became the righteousness <laughs> of Christ Jesus. Do you read that Romans 3 21? Maybe they're going to believe the word tonight. Romans 3 and 21. There it reads. But now the righteousness of God within the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. Mm. For there is no difference. No difference, people of no God. No difference. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in his blood. Hallelujah. The word of God is so clear that my God, but now apart from the law of righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify, testify that what this righteousness is given how? Through really? faith mm -hmm. really in Jesus faith. Christ to who? To just the Jew, just the Gentile, just no, all to all who what? Believe. believe. Somebody ought to shout. If you're a believer, oh, you ought to shout. My God. So understanding God's justification 
or declaration of righteousness over our lives, hallelujah, it has made us right in the sight both now and forever. Somebody ought to shout eternal, eternal, mm -hmm. hallelujah. So it, it's, it's, it's one of the most, um, let me slow down. My God, my God, my God. It is one of the most uh, important things to know about the righteousness of God. Um, but, but, you know, when you think about your, uh, think about a problem of the, the, the problem of the original sin, amen. Uh, original sin had been dealt with, amen. And know that you're not only the righteousness of God, but you also become a very special possession. Come on, you got to hear what I'm saying right here. The, go to First Peter, because I, I, I want to, like I say, I'm going to back everything up with the word of God. First Peter 2, chapter 2, um, so that First Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 9, verse 9. So again, just understand it again, that is, is one of the most important things to know about the righteousness of God. Listen to me, you have to know this, that your problem of original sin, of that original sin, that means that sin that, you know what, when you first believe you came to Christ, amen, that original sin, it's been dealt with, amen, it has been dealt with according to 2 Corinthians, amen, 5 and 21, hallelujah, that God made him who knew no sin for us so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. So knowing that the problem of the original sin has been dealt with and that now we not only are the righteousness of God, but we become his very special possession. Read that word for us, deacons, 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. 1 Peter 2, verse 9 and 10. But ye are chosen, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Do you hear what the word of God is saying about you? My God, you ought to be jumping and shouting and running around that house right now. You ought to make the smoke detector and the fire alarm go off on this word here. Look what God is saying about his righteous people. He said, you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. He said, you are a holy nation. That's what God says about us. My God. Come on, D. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. But you... But ye are a chosen generation, uh -huh. a royal priesthood, okay, and holy nation, mm -hmm. a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but we are now the people of God, which has not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtain mercy dearly beloved d you reading that uh, um that is james. the king james mm -hmm. jump over to the new living for me mm -hmm. jump over to the new living because again i want the people of god to really understand this that uh, um the our original your original sin have been dealt with it's been dealt with and uh they are not only the righteousness of god amen but God is so clear in his word that we have also become his very special possession. Amen. Amen. So, so read that for me in first Peter two. Yeah. In, in the new living, that's new, new living. living. Okay. Yeah, new living. Mm -hmm. Okay. First Peter two and nine, but you are not like that for you are a chosen people. You are royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. Do you hear what I'm saying? It says God's very own, God's special possession. So not only, again, hear what the word of God is saying to us, people of God. Not only are we the righteousness of God, but God calls us that we're his chosen people. We are royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We're God's special possession. Is that what your word says? That's what it says. We're God's very own possession. Nation. 
God's very own possession. My God, God possesses you. <laughs> God possesses you. Hear what the word of the Lord is saying here to us tonight. He's called us out of what? Darkness. So come on up out of that darkness. You don't have no business dibbling, dabbling in darkness no more. He called us into what, D? Into his what? Marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. He called us into his marvelous light, people of God. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of what? God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. My God, people of God, we have to really understand our position, understand our position and who we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. My prayer tonight is that you're able to take away something, amen, from, th from this study tonight to know, amen, who you are in Christ Jesus. And listen, just because the word of God, we, we know and we understand, and Bishop has really been laying the scripture foundation for us. It's so important that we understand that, you know what, because grace abound, do we sin? No, no. Uh, Deke, Deke saying we need to read. So go ahead, Deke. Yeah, what did we say? Okay. That's okay. still in First Peter. That's, that's First Peter. Okay. Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires uh -huh. that wage war against your very soul. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, even if they accuse you of doing wrong. They will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. My God, my God, people of God. Hallelujah. That is the word of God that God is giving, amen, us tonight. And the word of God, it comes right back. When we're talking about, again, even as Noah was a righteous man and he walked with God, when we begin to walk with God, we begin to take the word of God and God gives us in his word how we are to act, how we are to, amen, walk this walk of faith out. So truly, amen, We, I, my, my word tonight is that, you know what, know this, you are declared righteous, amen, you are declared righteous, amen, and so now I'm going to challenge you, I'm going to challenge you, you know, they all kind of challenge on TikTok and they be challenging this and that, but I'm going to challenge you to live like it, amen, live like it, amen, live like you the righteousness of amen. God, amen, that means that guess what, with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us, amen, living in you, amen, know this, know this, that God, hallelujah, when the Holy Spirit lives, live within us, we'll live like, amen, one that understand that we have been, amen, tried and found not guilty. Amen. We have been tried and we have been found not guilty. Why? Because we are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you all on tonight. My prayer is that you have been blessed by the word of God and that you truly understand, amen, God's word and as it pertains to righteousness. And now you don't have to second guess whether or not you are righteous because you understand that through the word of God that was, amen, taught tonight and in the series that we're in, that the righteousness of God, amen, it's a, it, it's a benefit. It's a benefit. It's a part of our salvation package benefit. Amen. And know this, that without a doubt, that as we uh, walk in our righteousness status, amen, then what we are now doing is we begin to strive for holiness, which is a byproduct, amen, of righteous living. So praise be to God that, you know what, we understand everything that we need for this walk of faith, amen, for this lifestyle of holiness is, amen, given to us through the word of God and the spirit of God is on board that would equip us so that we could walk this walk out and so that God would be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say to all of you tonight, God bless you. I pray that this word, amen, has been written upon the tables of your heart 
that you will begin to meditate on it and your challenge to walk and to live it will go forth. Amen. Yeah. Facebook, we want to say God bless you. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Amen. On behalf of our leadership, Dr. C.G. and Ver Lady Veronica Williams, we say thank you so much for joining us on tonight. Hallelujah. And we are hoping that we'll see you back and not just by yourself. Invite someone. Amen. Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. And we invite you that if you're able to come on and uh, join us in our in-person service. What a great experience. Amen. When we come together. Amen. Iron sharpening iron as we come and we pray. Amen. We proclaim the word of God. We praise God and we worship him. Amen. As a congregation in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you all on tonight. And I'm going to turn you over. Amen. To Sister Tasha that will handle our announcements on tonight. Praise God. God bless you. Goodbye, Facebook. See you Sunday at 1030 a.m. Okay. Amen. Thank you for that word on tonight. Mr. Thompson, uh, wow, I wrote, I definitely wrote down my keys tonight. Okay. Uh, so I know that number one is, is it's not earned. Amen. And it's given through an exchange process. When I, when I am a born again believer, amen. That means I give God my sin and he gives me righteousness. Amen. And your second point, the second point was it's not bought, but it's paid, it's paid for in full. And the third one was, it's not temporary, but it's eternal. Amen. So hopefully you guys wrote that down too, because I wrote mine down. Amen. All right. Um, E-given options. Cornerstone is pleased to offer secure E-given options to encourage faithful stewardship. E-given options available via the PushPay app or text to give via the Cornerstone giving link or cash app. That is dollar sign CBCC 238. Again, that is dollar sign CBCC 238. Of course, if you are given by way of cash, check, or swipe, please be sure to complete your giving slip. Remember, God loves cheerful giver. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And then, thank you for joining us tonight. We trust this service has been an encouragement to you. Thursday night life application sessions is a disciple-making module filled with principles to help you grow in your spiritual walk. We'll see you Sunday at 10.30 a.m. in person at 14648 Walters Road, Suite 112, Houston, Texas 77068, or online via Zoom or Facebook. Got a prayer request? Email it to cvcc238 at gmail.com. Again, that is cvcc238 at gmail.com. Our prayer warriors are ready to stand in the gap, and we are petitioning God, seeing the hand of God move in victory one. Amen. We are praying in the power of two or three on Wednesdays. Men are praying at noon, and women are at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. for 7, 14, or 21 minutes. If you are not connected with a prayer group, please see one of our ministers that you get plugged into a group to, power, to experience the power of two or three in prayer. Amen. I'm actually grateful for those, those Wednesday prayers. So if you're not connected, I advise you to get connected. Amen. And I believe that is it for tonight because I know Bishop is still out. So I'm not sure if he's going to be doing Raise the Praise tomorrow. But any other Friday, you can join our Bishop at, at uh, Fridays at 1130 a.m. by way of Raise the Praise, 100.com, online radio, gospel radio, praise all day, every day. Cornerstone Evangelism, Reaching the Nations. I'm going to turn it over to the Giving Peddler. Amen. 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 Awesome word on tonight. Amen. Um, at this time, amen, it's time to give, amen. God, the, the, the Bible strictly says that God loves a cheerful giver, amen. Uh, I already see him coming through. Thank you, Deacon Minister Thompson, uh, for your giving on tonight, amen. Uh, also, I want to just be mindful uh, as Bishop and First Lady are out uh, in war, we want to make sure that we're giving so we can participate in the giving and war on tonight, amen. So uh, if everybody on the call, amen, would just Come and bring your best offering on the night, amen. Uh, as we, as the they continue to come in, as I see them come in, 
uh, they continue to come in. Let's just give a good offering on tonight so that we can participate in our giving. Amen. Man, and I'll give a few minutes as they continue to come in. Thank you, Sister Sandra. Amen. Everybody give on tonight. Amen. Amen. What an awesome word. Awesome word, Minister Thompson, uh, for allowing the Lord to use you on tonight. Uh, we bless God for that. Amen. Amen. As they are coming in, people are still giving. Amen. Let's continue to give. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Thank you, Minister Harris. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. As everybody had an opportunity to give. Amen. Amen. Well, on tonight, amen, I just want to pray for the offering, and then I'll turn it back over to our minister on tonight. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of giving, God. God, we thank you that, God, we are chill for givers, Lord. God, we thank you, Father God, for, for all of the blessings, the many blessings that you bestow on our lives, God. God, we ask that you keep us, Lord God. God, we thank you right now, Lord God, for, Father God, our offering on tonight uh, for use for the building of the kingdom of God, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we just Thank you, and we give you the glory, and we give you the honor and the praise. And all the believers will say in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the gathering on tonight. Amen. Uh, thank you for those of you who did special giving on tonight. Amen. As uh, the bishop is in Philadelphia in the at the convocation conference there. And uh, we're so grateful for you supporting in your time of giving, amen, that will also uh, support him in his time of giving and representing the ministry of Cornerstone Victory Christian Center with the World Assembly of Restoration. Amen. So grateful, amen, for the word of God on tonight. So grateful for the gathering. We're excited, looking forward, amen, to Sunday. Amen. Sunday, so grateful for the word on tonight. Well, with all the people now uh, uh, gathering on the platform, we're going to release the benediction. And as we release the benediction, according to the word of God, say, may the God of peace who brought through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Christ Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And the people of God will say, amen. Amen. Come on, open up your mic, show your face, show some love, tell somebody good night. Good to see him. Sister Bree, good to see you. Brother Ro, good to see you. Good to see you. Amen, Sister Sandra. Good, night, God bless everybody. You. good to see you. Corey, God bless yeah, you. Good to see you. Brother Corey. <laughs> um, who is that? Brother Kevin, Minister Harris, God bless you tonight. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Bishop White, go ahead, show yourself. God bless you. Amen. So good to see, have you tonight participating with us. Mother King, we love you. God bless you. Everybody have a blessed day tomorrow. See you Sunday. Yeah, perfect. 10 30 right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.